Hi again, just want to say thank you very much for all the positive uh, reports that came through about the last video. Uh, I know there were some really big sweeping generalizations uh, in there, so for those of you who have a much greater technical knowledge, I do appreciate the fact that you let a few things sort of ride in order to get the message across to guys who perhaps don't have such level of knowledge as you guys do. Um, anyway, I just wanted to add a couple of things and for this I'm going to uh, primarily talk about um, Dudek and ozone wings. Remember I said in the last video that the ozone range tend to have constant reflex or trim settings and they just change their instance um, in order to uh, vary the speed range and then when the instance change the angle of attack change as well. Dudek generally don't do it quite the same way with the exception of Pascal Ballet's design for the Hadron um, and then the Hadron XX as well. They tend to follow the constant reflex philosophy of the uh, ozone wings. But I'm not sure about the warp, I haven't really looked at that, but certainly with things like the nucleon synthesis, I think the universal um, reaction, all those kind of wings, they still change instance and therefore angle of attack but they also allow the amount of reflex to uh, to increase as well so the key differences with that is that they all have reflex at all the time so the aerofoil is naturally stabilizing even when it's on fully slow trim when you go faster um, on the ozones and on the dudec hadrons um, they will st they're still naturally stable wings. They still move their centre of pressure in a way that stabilises uh, the wing and gives a CN figure of greater than zero. So that's a, a good situation. But with the other dudec wings, what happens is when you open up the trims and the negative camber actually increases, uh, you actually get a, a much, much stronger restoring force to give that pitch stability. But that is at the expense of efficiency. So. Therefore, I would say that if I'm someone that uh, likes to uh, go on a long cross country and the most important thing to me is just knowing that that wing is absolutely rock solid above me without touching anything, then I would go for wings like the Nucleon XX uh, and, and that kind of thing. However, it's costing me just a hint uh, in efficiency at faster trim settings. That's why I personally choose to go for the uh, original Dudek Hadron um, because I still got, when I let the trims out, I still got that positive pitch stability, um, but it's not um, emphasised even further by having what I consider to be almost silly levels of reflex. So consequently, if it gets really, really bumpy, then I tend to trim in and fly actively. That's my personal choice. Um, I like to take control of my destiny, but each pilot must decide for themselves. There, there is no real rule on this. There's a manufacturer's recommendation, um, but it's only based on um, their personal feelings. It's not something that you can quantify in terms of really defining, you must do this. You must look at it from your own perspective. You've picked your wing according to how you want to fly, and you should pick your reactions according to how you want to fly. And if you don't know, then just follow the manufacturer's recommendations. You know, I think that's it. It was just a brief follow-up just to try and uh, help answer some of the questions I've had since the previous video about how to fly. Like I say, it's only the way I do it. You must pick your own way based on the info you now know.